Welcome back and in this next session we're going to go over the web UI for HashiCorp Vault. So Vault has a web-based user interface that enables you to unseal, authenticate, manage policies and secrets engines um, and we're going to check that out now. So if you have a dev server running go ahead and hit Control c and terminate that dev server before you do anything else. So um, goes without saying, but I'm going to say it. If you ever use Vault in dev mode, the UI is automatically enabled, but Vault is running outside development mode. The UI is not activated by default. So there's a bunch of dev stuff that's just kind of running in there. And maybe it doesn't go without saying, if you didn't know that. But uh, we're going to activate this UI by setting the UI configuration option. And for now, We'll do it like this. Let's see here. I'm just going to grab this sucker. Beep boop. UI equals true. And then you have a listener and storage. Okay. So all you got to do is add UI is true. So the UI runs on the same port as the vault listener. So you have to configure at least one listener stanza in order to to access the UI. So we're just going to replace this with our address. Like that. So we probably need to close that. Um, if Vault is bound to localhost, it will only be accessible from a local machine. So just keep that in mind. In this case, the UI is accessible um, at this URL from any machine um, on the, the same subnet. Okay, so whatever your machine subnet is using, you could if you're in your house, you could do, you know, whatever. But it's also accessible via DNS entry. So if you have a cool vault dot service dot whatever your name is, um, you could do the same thing there as well. Um, you just have to make sure you go to this and then when you actually visit it, it would be like HTTP colon slash slash the address slash UI. So that would be the endpoint. So in my case, I'm just going to use, um, I guess I could just use localhost. So we'll just do that. So let's go ahead and set this up. So we're going to start a server config. I'm going to delete all this and I'm going to use this template provided by HashiCorp and we're going to see if this template works. So uh, t config.hcl and a file. UI is true, disable mlock true, storage raft, our path, our node ID, our listener is listening for any inbound traffic on port 8200 with the TLS disabled. Again, don't do this in production. Uh, with the API address of localhost and the cluster address of localhost on 8201. Cool. So raft storage, make sure you, not like I did last time, actually have this uh, path. So you'll definitely want that. Um, and although this says TLS disable is true, vault should always be used with TLS and prod uh, just to make sure it's secure and it requires a certificate file and key file on each vault host. So make sure you have that if you need it. So to start fresh, I'm just going to delete this entire directory. And then I'm going to uh, make a new one. There we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to put a period there. Uh, yeah, and then let's go ahead and start the vault and save this and salt, start our vault server with this config file. Hopefully, because mlock is disabled, we don't get our fancy warning. Uh-oh, what do we got here? Error loading configuration from config.hcl. Expected indent string assignment lbrace got here doc. Mm -hmm. Let's go take a look at this. 
So I should have a T config and a file. That looks good. That looks good. Storage raft, TCP. There's all this stuff. Hmm. Let me take a look. So I think what I'm going to try to do, I think I posted my whole script in here. And I shouldn't have done that. So let me take out this end of file business like that. And let me just stick the, oops, yeah. Let's stick this up top. And then let's just add this stuff to the bottom. Save and try again. Hey, there we go. We're gonna allow access. Good job, Windows Defender. All right, and that ended up working out. So, yeah, I think I was just trying to run the tconfig file. I should have been run over here to kind of create this, but that's fine. It's early in the morning, and I'm not thinking. Okay, so we've got a raft storage backend. That looks good. So let's go to our browser. Pull a browser window over here. HTTP colon slash slash local host port 8200, right? I think slash UI, if I remember correctly. We're going to see here real quick. Uh, the vault server is initialized and sealed. It says vault. I don't see anything. But there it is. Um, before continuing, the server's storage backend requires starting a cluster or joining a cluster. So we need something. Why? Do I not have, do I have a warning? There's no warnings. Hmm. What I'm looking for is there should be a raft storage option here with a warning saying the vault is sealed and then we should be able to create any raft cluster from the console. Okay, so I did some research and it looks like this might actually be a bug. So um, if you can see RAF storage, you should see, you should see a screen that looks like this. Then uh, you should be good to go. Then you can follow the rest of this um, and we'll just kind of skim over it. For me, I absolutely cannot see anything, so that doesn't help. Um, so anyways, create a new RAF cluster. And then you enter the uh, five shares. You want a, a threshold of three. That's the minimum anyway. And then initialize it here. And then once you get to these keys, you want to download all your keys. Um, again, make sure when you're doing this that no, no, you don't have one person that has all the keys. You want to break them up. And then you need at least three keys to unseal the vault. So then you can click continue to unseal here. Open the downloaded file and then copy a key, save, and then do that three times. Click your heels three times and then you'll get back to Kansas. Copy your root token. And we did this in the command line uh, before, so it should be this should look pretty similar or at least familiar. And then you sign in a vault with your token. And then there's a wizard to take you through some pretty common steps. And you can do the restart guide, um, you know, whatever you want to do. But uh, yeah, so you can play around with it a little bit. I don't, I don't know why my man's not working, but it's not. And that kind of sucks because I'd really like to be able to do this. But <laughs> it most certainly does not work. So anyways, uh, I put in a ticket with HashiCorp. Uh, I'm not the only one. And if you have a similar problem, I encourage you to do the same. Uh, more feedback is always better. And if it works for you, then great. 
and I, I wish you all the best success in your life. So anyways, that is basically it for getting started with uh, the UI, the web UI. So if you have any questions, let me know. But if not, then you've just completed all of the getting started tutorials required um, as per the recommendation from HashiCorp for Vault Fundamentals to cover all the objectives that would be covered in the uh, Vault Certified Associate exam, which I do not plan on taking because I absolutely abhor security. But uh, maybe that's something you want to do. I don't know. So next up, um, we're going to go through some next steps, and then we'll get into some Vault documentation.